redeemed, rehabilitated, and real entertaining. This is the Carl Jackson Podcast. Welcome to the Good Friday edition of the Carl Jackson Show podcast. I am so honored and privileged to have our guest, Dr. Michael Youssef, coming up to talk about Resurrection Sunday, uh, Holy Week, obviously, but I want to talk about cultural issues as well, wokeness that has infiltrated the uh, the church and more. We're going to get into all of that. It's going to be a fan fantastic interview. I cannot wait uh, to hear from Dr. Michael Youssef, uh, and I'm sure you're excited as well. Guys, today's show is brought to you in part by Pardon by Grace. Guys, I want you to see this film. This is the perfect weekend to buy the DVD or check out the film at SalemNow.com. From the makers of Graham Family Films comes a powerful and inspiring true story that will touch your heart and renew your faith. Introducing Pardon by Grace, the incredible journey of Scott Heiberger, played by Joey Lawrence, a convicted criminal turned prison minister who defies all odds and receives an unlikely pardon to continue his ministry. Featuring Grammy Award winning singer songwriter Michael W. Smith as Heiberger's pastor, Pardon by Grace showcases the transformative power of redemption and the boundless reach of God's love. Watch Pardon by Grace on Salem Now, and when you purchase a copy at SalemNow.com, a DVD will be donated to Scott Heiberger's nonprofit prison organization, Behind the Wire Ministries, providing hope and support to the incarcerated. Together, we can share the power of faith and forgiveness with those who need it most. Visit SalemNow.com, SalemNow.com to purchase your DVD and donate to this incredible cause today. Again, the film Pardon by Grace at SalemNow.com. Also, today's show is brought to you in part by MyPillow.com. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better, Mike Lindell has now come out with the MyPillow 2.0. That's right. Mike first invented the original MyPillow 20 years ago, but now he's done something different. He's discovered this new technology that makes it even better. If you can imagine, there's a brand new fabric that dissipates heat, making the pillow softer, smoother, and even cooler. Now, it still has the same patented uh, uh, feel inside of the pillow, but now with this new fabric, you're going to love it even more. But listen to this, guys. There's a buy one, get one free exclusive to my offer, exclusive to my listeners. All you have to do is go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio listener square, enter my name, Carl, C-A-R-L, or if you prefer, give them a call at 800-858-0263. That's 800 800- 858-0263 to get your my pillows. All right. Buy one, get one free of the new My Pillow 2.0. All right. Guys, stay tuned for some quick program messaging, and then we'll be back with our guest, Dr. Michael Youssef. All right, guys, now I am back with my guest, Dr. Michael Youssef, or Pastor Michael Youssef. Many of you may know him as he's a senior pastor of the Church of the Apostles in Atlanta, Georgia, author, speaker, uh, broadcaster of Leading the Way, where uh, where I originally heard him. Uh, I, I was, you guys know this, you know some of my testimony. I was a complete and utter heathen. Uh, <laughs> this man has poured into my life so much, he doesn't even know. Uh, but but it's, it's, it's so cool to be able to uh, to speak with him. And I'm looking forward to interviewing uh, interviewing him. We've already established that my producers were much bigger heathens than me. Uh, and they listened, no, I'm just kidding. But they, they listened to him as well. And, uh, and, and guys, I, I'm just looking forward to this, man. I, I, I love the Holy Week. I love Resurrection Sunday. And I think we have the yeah. perfect guest with us, Dr. Michael Youssef. Welcome to the Carl Jackson Show podcast. Thank you so much, Brother Carl. I'm so glad to be back with you. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, uh, before we were or when we were offline, you were just telling me yeah. that you had a uh, you guys had an event yesterday at your church, the Church of the Apostles right. in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, a, a sort right. of a men's breakfast or conference where you talked about toxic dinner, dinner, yeah. okay yep it was dinner okay uh you know monday thursday known in the church is the, the thursday before good friday and the reason it was called monday thursday come from the latin word manda or mandate hmm. 
uh, because we remember the Thursday night where our Lord Jesus Christ uh, issued the mandate to the disciples after he washed their feet. He said, you love one another. Wow. Okay. And uh, like I have loved you and uh, serve one another. And so for 30 years now, every Monday, Thursday, I invite all the men in our church to come and uh, and meet with me. And I'll talk about topics that don't necessarily talk about, you know, in sermons and details. I might mention it in, in passing, but then really deal with issues that men face. We've done all kinds of topics through the years. And... Um, this this year, I was burdened to talk to them about the difference between what the world called toxic masculinity and their effort and their energy to demasculinize men mm. uh, and uh, what the Bible says about masculinity, biblical masculinity. And biblical masculinity, just like biblical femininity, is good. God loves. He made us men and women, uh, and, and, and therefore he... Uh, wants to affirm the biblical masculinity and the biblical femininity. So I talked to them about that, and I told them from the very beginning, somebody told me some time ago, when you deal with that issue, it's like putting your head in a bag that's filled of fighting cats. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, that's a, that's a good analogy. But you know what? I wasn't expecting to go here with you, Pastor, but I'm, b- sure. b- but, but I'm, but I'm glad you you mentioned it because obviously I want to talk about the significance of Holy Week and leading up to Resurrection Sunday. It's very important yes. for obviously believers, yes. but also those that might tune into the podcast that that aren't believers. I'm hoping they sure. uh, they will uh, you know understand more deeply what it is, what what it means for those of us that are Christians. But what I, one of the things that I I I, I love about you. Um, is you're not afraid to take on the cultural issues, which I believe, unfortunately, I, I think a lot of pastors are uh, a pastor, yeah. and I, I I think it's I think it's really sad, um, but I yeah. think the church should be at the forefront of these issues. Yep. Uh, so we have this issue with toxic masculinity, uh, which is nonsense yep. to me. I, I I understand that there are some bad men, just like there are some yeah, bad course. women. Uh, Sure. And Jesus can save us all and Jesus can change us all. But toxic masculinity yep. to beat down men in such a way, it's just it's utterly insane. Yep. And I think that it's doing such damage to the culture. We have these men pretending to be women, so on, et cetera. Um, yep. and, and, and the church needs to speak on this stuff more. Absolutely. And I don't think uh, it, the, the word cultural war is a misnomer. And we need to stop using that term. Mm. It is a spiritual war. That's a good point. It's not cultural war. It's spiritual. Because there's such thing as good and evil. There's such thing as right and wrong. It doesn't matter. And and so when, when we talk about cultural issues, they're not cultural issue. R- life is not cultural issue. It's a spiritual issue. S- sexual fidelity is not a cultural issue. It's a biblical issue. It, it's a spiritual issue. And you go down the line, everything that I deal with. And, and the, the, the problem is that Marxists and Marxist forces have been working behind the scenes for so long, over 100 years, and they've tried this way, and they tried that way. We had the McCarthy era, and then this and that and the other thing. But they've never given up. They've always... And now with the pandemic and all the the George Floyd and all that, they saw that this is their chance now to really burst into society and begin to divide society because that's a Marxist ideology, which he inherited from a a Danish uh, philosopher by the name of Kierkegaard. That is, if you create a division in society, whether between men and women, rich and poor, and any division, uh, it, it, it's going to basically help destroy that society. And then the Marxists would say, now we re- rebuild uh, after we destroy the, the, the patriarchal system, we will build a utopia. Mm. And this utopia never worked anywhere. The foolishness of people who follow this. I, was, I wish I can take them you know, around the world and show them. It failed, of course, in the Soviet Union. But 
But who remembers that? It's only 30 years ago, 20 years ago. It, it, Everybody's forgotten that. It, it, it's amazing. And you made such a, such a good point just a second ago. Uh, we, uh, I think a lot of these uh, Marxists, if you will, fall for this nonsense simply because either they've not read or they've not traveled. Now, I'm, I'm one. I haven't traveled much, but I can pick up a book and read, uh, you know, and, sure. and, 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 uh, and I've done a lot of that over the years. And, and ironically, Pastor, one of the things that uh, God did early on, he gave me a, a love and a passion for politics. I didn't care yeah. a lick about politics. Sure. Uh, until like uh, until God saved me, and and then all of a sudden, yep. I was understanding things spiritually, such as abortion, which at uh, you know earlier in my life I supported, and I was like, oh my yep. lord, I can't believe it's like God was just just opening my eyes, and I. It, yep. But it's sad. I think we have become, yep. and I want to get your take on this. Is it that we've become so spoiled, perhaps, in America, America's yep. Christian churches, that we yep. can't even pick up on these spiritual things that are attacking the church, wokeism, uh, what yep. people would call cultural market, uh, Marxism that are dividing us? Yeah. Well, they really, uh, this is the sad part, is you got you got a variety of, of people. There is the pious who say, the world is going to hell anyway, so just let's close in uh, on ourselves and and, uh, and 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 focus on ourselves and 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 be spiritual, but have nothing to do with the world. Mm. Well, even Jesus in his high priestly prayer said, "I pray that you don't take them of the world, but to keep them from the evil one; that they'll be in the world, not of the world." And and he said, "Occupy till I come." <laughs> what does that mean? It was that we to occupy, we take over. And instead, what the Christians have done through the years, every time they get opposition in the education, they withdraw from education. In the media, they withdraw from the media. In the entertainment, they withdrew from... In the campuses, college campuses, mm. we withdrew from college campuses. And then we allow these evil forces to take over. So right now, we are reaping all of that pacifism that uh, Christians have exhibited through the years. And that's a very sad day, really. I'm, I'm sorry for my 14 grandchildren that they will not know even what I knew and, and, and our parents knew. And, but that's, that's the time we're in. And so I was beginning to think that maybe may, we may be coming toward the end, end times. <laughs> man, man, I, I, I do feel like I, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, pastor. Like I'm sometimes I avoid conversations uh, of the of the end times i'm like you know what everybody should just be ready you don't know when jesus is yeah. coming back uh but i can't that's the point I, yeah but i but i can't yeah. i can't help but to look at all the things that are transpiring around the yeah. world and and obviously right here in america and i'm like okay i need to start paying attention i need to start yeah. listening to more of uh dr michael Youssef's <laughs> Youssef is, uh, 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 uh sermons on the end times because yeah. good lord pastor it's insane yeah. where we are well we i just published a book from uh charisma which is leader stone throw away from where you are charisma published a book uh, in october is is this is the end near the title of the book is the end near and i am not uh, known for being an in time preacher, where you know the the rapture and the thousand right. years and so on. All the people do that. That's great. But I, that's not me. I am an expositor. I go through the Bible verse by verse, apply it to the culture, apply it to today. But then I, 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 I as I, I'm trained as a sociologist. Uh, it's my doctoral training. It's not in theology, but in sociology and anthropology. So I began to look at the culture from those eyes, and I saw some things that are happening. I went back to Matthew 24, which is known as the Olivet Discourse. Yes. And I, I read really in ways like I've never read it before. I mean, I just began to delve into it. And what is Jesus really saying? He's saying, well, they asked him, you know, what are the sign of nearness of your return? And he said, think of a, 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 a mother uh, with a, in a childbirth and labor pains. And this is what our Lord said, you know, and they said, you know, labor pains, of course, don't happen in the beginning of the uh, pregnancy or even the middle of the pregnancy, but toward the end of the pregnancy. And he gives six, six signs or six labor pains. All of those six things like earthquakes, wars and rumors of wars and famine, all those things have been with us for a long time. 
but what does the, the, the concept of a, a, a labor pain for a woman who are about to give ba- birth is that these labor pains start happening uh, more frequently and more intense, uh, intense uh, 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 pain. And so he said, when you see this thing happen, look up and get ready. So f- for, for some people, the idea is to get ready, put on white robes, head for the mountains and wait for the spaceship. That's not what getting ready is. Getting ready at 75, I'm working harder than I've ever worked in my life. Man, you I'm look great. More- Holy moly. I mean, oh, excuse me. I, like, wow. So, wow, okay. I give more than I've ever given. I'm doing more than I've ever done. Why? Because I think that is what anticipating the return of Christ means, is that we work harder, we, we serve longer, do, a, you know, and I'm grateful for the energy he gives me, so we... We just had a, a crusade down in Macon, Georgia, called Hope of the Heart of Georgia. And what God did for a year of hard work on part of my team and the 500 churches down in, the, in that part in middle Georgia is that something happened. There were hundreds of people come forward to receive Christ. This was last weekend. Wow. But more than that, there was such healing between the races. It hasn't happened in 170 years. Wow. The blacks and whites holding hands and going around the Colosseum praying mm. for over uh, weeks before the, the event. And so this is what anticipating the return of Christ means to me, is to work as long and hard, uh, give oneself, uh, anticipating his coming so I can take as many people to heaven with me as, as he would allow me. Oh, man, I love that. And, and, and since you touched on that issue with race, Pastor, let me let me let me go there with you for a sec. Well, you know about sure. CRT, critical race theory, uh, yep. diversity, equity, and inclusion. I didn't realize that your doctorate in sociology. So this is a- absolutely yeah. perfect. All right. Um, yeah. So you, I mean, you just touched on it. The church should be the leading example, should we not, when it comes to race relations? And 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 I've seen. CRT, DEI. I, I've even yep. looked on some yep. websites, Christian websites, that I would have never thought in a million years, Pastor, the, bowing down to the woke mob, CRT, yep. DEI. Yep. I, I, I'm in yep. disbelief sometimes. I know it. I know it. And I and so many evangelical pastors who preach the gospel in the past, they just all of a sudden, they are veering in us ever so slowly and then you would wonder, you know, how in the world they're going to face Jesus. Mm. And, and they try to think, well, it's social justice. What is, there, there is a biblical social justice. <laughs> First Timothy 6, he said, command the, men, the rich men of this age to give and, and to the poor. That's what our biblical social justice is. Not for the government to come and tell you exactly course, what to do, right. you, you, who you're going to get what. That is communism. That's socialism. And the, and the subtlety where people think, oh, well, this is compassion. They're not compassion. When you give the founder of, of BLM $9 million to spend in a, in a year on a house or, 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 or uh, uh, private jets or whatever, that's not social justice. That's just pure false guilt. Hmm. And, and they impose this false guilt on corporations. And, of course, sadly, it seeps down to the church. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And we've, uh, yeah, I, 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 I couldn't, I, I could not believe it. Let me, let me, let me go here, uh, with you. If, uh, if I could here, pastor, the COVID lockdowns, this was another thing yep. that absolutely uh, astounded me. I go to faith assembly or attend faith assembly of God here in Orlando, Florida. So our pastor, yep. uh, pastor Carl Stevens, he's since, uh, has, he's no longer the senior pastor. He's the global pastor. Now we now have pastor Johnny Wilson, but we didn't shut down. I mean, for the first, I think for the first couple of weeks, there was this, okay, what's going on here? And then we're yeah. like, no, we're, we're, we're not shutting down. A lot of people didn't return to church, but now uh, since we never shut down, the growth has been unreal, but so yeah. many people, I mean, yeah. so many Christian churches, I, I, I watched around here. I watched churches right here in central Florida, shut their right. doors for two years two years yep. pastor and and i'm like yeah. we have governor ron DeSantis who was like hey you don't you know it, 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 unbelievable to me unbelievable your take yeah oh, absolutely well in georgia we don't quite we don't have quite 
Governor DeSantis, but uh, our governor basically issued 10 guidelines uh, for churches, uh, but he did not shut them down, which we, we, we're like you. We, for two weeks, you know, we start st- we've been streaming for 20 years, right. so we're still st- streaming. But I said, hey, I'm streaming live from the church if you want to come. So people start showing up. Right. Now, one of the guidelines is that every other pew, you know, be empty. Right. So many of the mega church pastors said, oh, I'm not going to preach a half empty church or a half full church. So they stayed shut to the end of the year and they wouldn't open. So as a result of that, we had so many who came to visit and they stayed. Good. And so we, 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 needed, we just kept going. And uh, I said, you know, our lives are in his hands. As long as we're careful, as long as we're thoughtful, you know, we, we, uh, we, we just pressed on. And I even traveled overseas in the middle of all this. I went and did a program in Cairo, Egypt, wow. live uh, for our channel, for the Arabic channel. And, uh, and I went to Dubai. I went to uh, uh, and whatever they, they allow me <laughs> to the country. I went and I did not stop. Wow. Is there is because. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. No, no, please. No, is there do you see a a difference in perhaps uh, what's it, fervor, maybe uh, in Christians in, uh, let's say, more persecuted regions as compared to the U.S.? And I'm not trying to knock the U.S. I'm so no. thankful that God has placed me here. But but I do wonder about the faith in places that that you've just mentioned compared to what yeah. you see in general, generally speaking, here in America? Yeah. Well, we have a, te- a television station. It's called Kingdom Sat, Malakot in Arabic, that broadcasts 24-7 in 195 million homes in the Arab world. Wow. So we, we've been having this ministry for, for years. We have a ministry. In, uh, I go to the Middle East all the time. I'm preaching uh, in Dubai and in Egypt and Jordan and Lebanon. I've been all over the place. For years now, from talking about 30 plus years, but the persecution is real. And most of the persecution in those countries is that when a person becomes a believer in Jesus, uh, they get kicked out of their homes, they kicked out of their jobs. And uh, so my son has a minister go help the persecuted. So he comes in and try to help these people in the Middle East to to find a place to live, jobs and so forth. And so... Yes, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. The persecution of Christians in the West has been on steroid in the last 20 years. This is true. Uh, There's a friend of mine in Scotland who headed up a big trust, not a Christian trust, but a a big one of the largest, in fact, the largest in Scotland. A new chairman for the board comes in. He's been director for 20 years. She said, what church do you go to? He told her, she said, well, that's a church that does not believe in a gay marriage. Mm. He said, we believe in biblical marriage. Next day, she fired him after 20 years of service. Wow. Uh, there, a very prominent man in Australia, in Melbourne, Australia. He was the head of one of the big football clubs. I mean, it's, it's most respected man. Fired him. You go to the wrong church. And this, I can tell you, I can sit here and tell you, Hundreds of examples, not just two. And it's happening in Canada. It's happening in England. It's happening in Australia, New Zealand. It's happening all over the world. And so we're seeing the persecution is now intensifying worldwide, not just in those countries uh, where Islam, uh, particularly militant Islam, has has dominated. And that could be, and that's why I'm, I'm thinking, as the world being prepared for the Antichrist. Mm. And I just raised the question. That wow, you know what? It, it, it's you brought that around perfectly. It, it, it's it's uh, it's something that we have to consider. It's something that we have to think about. We should always be looking through the lens, you know, of a biblical worldview. You know, it's funny yeah. that you mentioned what you just did, Pastor. I was when when God saved me, I, I was listening to all types of talk radio because I was working insane hours and still am but working insane hours a different period of time uh in in my life and and driving all the time and all this stuff and i would listen to talk radio and i would listen to howard stern i would listen to crazy stuff and then i started listening to rush limbaugh didn't even know who he was at the time then i started listening to uh christian pastors started listening to you uh as is uh as well as uh 
um, as well as others. But then I started listening to Jay Seculo of the ACLJ. Yeah. And and this was I know he's my friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this was when I was literally when God first saved me. And I'm sitting here thinking, yeah. you know, I'm like, really? I mean, come on. Are Christians in, in America really persecuted this way? But it, one of the first things God did was show me the attack uh, the attack upon the church by by simply listening to the ACLJ at the time. Sure. And and honestly, yeah. I would listen to different ministries and just be like, how come how come they're they don't talk about this political stuff? So this is one of the ways that God stirred up the love and the passion that I have for politics. Um, sure. And and because I see it as an assault on the church if we veer to the left. The America has yep. been able to send so many missionaries out because we're a free nation. And and, and yep. if we don't remain free, then we're not going to be able to do that. We'll save fewer Absolutely. souls, if you will. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and how else would uh, the Satan destroy Christian mission hmm. by getting us focused on our own problem, our own, and become naval gazers? And, and then in the end... Uh, Nobody is is uh, preaching the gospel. Nobody is going out and, uh, with compassion and with love, with mercy, uh, telling people the truth. And so because we love you, we tell you the truth. The, you know, we have this convoluted concept of love that if you love me, you have to love my sin. Hmm. Or if you love me, you have to accept my sin as the norm. Oh, and that, it's crazy. I mean, that's just totally non-biblical. It is because I love a person that I warn them and, and and I don't condemn sin in others before I condemn sin in my life. Uh, and and now that I've been walking with the Lord for not quite sixty years, but almost there, uh, you know, as you get older and you in, in your walk with Christ, the years, you learn to keep short accounts. Mm-hmm. You know, things that maybe would take me a week to be convicted of and repent of. Now they immediately, a, as soon as such a literally point. the words leave my mouth, oh, oh, Lord, I'm really sorry. That is not, please forgive me. And that's what happened as you grow in Christ and in intimacy with Christ. And it's like uh, if, you, if you're wearing a dirty overall, just another blotch of uh, grease is not going to be uh, of obvious. But then as your, your, your clothes gets, you know, clearer and whiter uh, the slightest bit of stain will show mm. and that's what happened as you grow in sanctification you grow in christ likeness that you know you can't stand that stain you immediately want to uh, re- remove it and ask forgiveness uh, john said if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins god is faithful and just and he'll forgive us all our sins you know, you were talking about heathenism uh, earlier in the program. I have a, a neighbor here. He died, sadly. And uh, and every time I talked to him, I said, Bill, I want to tell you about your Messiah. And I'll talk to him. And he said, Michael, I'm just one of those heathens. So just, you know, even God can't. Uh, I said, yes. Confessing that you're a heathen is the first step. Right. In fact, it's a good step. Now tell God you need to be saved from that heathenism. <laughs> he, he couldn't get himself into that next step. Mm, man, oh man, that's so that's so heart wrenching to uh, to to hear that, but Pastor. We only have a short period of time left with you. Sure. Let me just run through a, a couple of uh, 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 comments or and, and get your take on them or questions here. Separation yeah. of church and state. Your take. Well, there is no such thing in the Constitution. And uh, I mean, you, you've heard that a million times. Uh, the, the, you know, the, you know the, the, the establishment clause that Jay Sekula talks about all the time, that the, the, the government does not establish religion nor interfere with the freedom of religion. But, you know, it's a letter that was written by Jefferson to a Baptist pastor, and he talked about that wall of separation. But it wasn't a separation between God and, the, and culture. Right. It was a separation that the government does not interfere in church's affairs. That is really what the separation is. Okay. But, of course, the left uh, Marxists love it, and they, and, they, and they know sometimes, some of them, not all of them, but they know mis- they are misguiding and misleading people deliberately when they use that term. But there's no such thing. This is the greatness of America. When I was a boy growing up under socialist dictatorship in Egypt, I longed to come and be free. Mm. And I escaped literally back in the 60s with the clothes on my back wow. to come to, to this freedom here in America. And and now, 
they are using uh, uh, just a letter that was written to illustrate why the government should not interfere with the church to say, oh, the church should, you know, should just keep their preaching inside the church. Muslim countries, I preach in Egypt every year, and the law says you preach the gospel to your heart's content inside the walls of the church, but not outside. Mm. But that's a Muslim country. Now, this is happening in America. You, if you want to preach the gospel inside the church, you shouldn't go on radio or television, and there are many forces that are trying to stop Christian media under the guise of separation of church and state. But that's falsehood, and they know it's falsehood, but we need to keep going and, and not be afraid and, and, and take courageous steps, and we know that God will honor us in the end. Man, I hope that pastors will listen uh, to this uh, podcast and just and just hear your explanation of that, because I think pastors need, in America need to be able to explain that. I, I, I really do. It's, it, it's so important. All right. Uh, the importance of, uh, of keeping a biblical worldview for every Christian so that we can so that we can see the enemy coming. Like I said, CRT, DEI, all of this woke stuff, a trans stuff right. that is just, I mean, infiltrated yeah. the church. How important is it for pastors to drill down biblical worldview, biblical worldview, biblical worldview? Yeah. Uh, I was told that uh, in the in the government, when they are training uh, experts to be able to discern and pick up false currency that uh, is uh, uh, fake dollars, uh, not, not, not really, uh, 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 you, know, you, you know what I mean? F yeah. you know, they just print it, right. you know, not, not, not real. That they spend the vast majority of their time training these detectives in recognizing the real currency. Right, not the counterfeit, and, right. And I was at, yeah, the, and, and they say, well, wh why don't we look at the counterfeit? No, no, just get to know the real currency. Mm. Once you really know the real currency, you're going to find it easier to pick up the counterfeit. That's good. But that's what we are supposed to do in the pulpits in the churches, is to show people the good stuff, the real stuff, the truth of biblical truth. And therefore, they will be able to discern and this is really one of the one of the biggest biggest challenge. We don't have discerning Christians. Mm. They're not discerning, and therefore somebody comes to them with some emotional story, and oh, they, they fall for it, and they next thing they move to the what they call deconstruction. Pastors are now going to deconstruct their their faith, and musicians, Christian musicians. And um, wow. uh, the, 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 anyway, I can tell you some, some real stories, gut-wrenching stories, but because they've never really understood, nor have they poured their heart into the real thing, and that's the Word of God. Because the Word of God and the Holy Spirit will make you discern, discerning. Man. Oh man, that's a uh, it, it, man. That's informative and 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 uh, honestly sad at the same time, Pastor. All right, last thing. This is Holy Week. Obviously, Palm Sunday. Today is Good Friday. Uh, Sunday, we're yeah. looking forward to Easter Sunday, a Resurrection uh, Sunday. Talk to us about the meaning of this week and the good news of the gospel of Jesus sure. Christ. Well, you know, a lot of people celebrate Christmas, even the non-believers. But for us who know and love Jesus, this is the most important time of the year. This is the week that changed the world. Mm. This is the week that literally separated uh, the, the world in two, uh, either Christ your Savior or not. And so uh, Holy Week to me, in, you know, in Egypt growing up there, in fact, I used to have meetings every night during Holy Week. And... It's vitally important for people to ask, why did God send his son from heaven? Why did Jesus, the son of God, who coexisted with the father before all eternity, uh, lay aside his splendor? He never laid aside his divinity, but he la laid aside the splendor of his divinity in order to become a homeless man in, in our world, in our earth. And, and yet he went about doing good and healing the sick. Uh, raising the dead, opening the eyes of the blind, and making the lame walk. And then in the end, s sinless, perfect, uh, literally without sin, hung on that cross 
in order to carry the sin of everyone who would come to him and ask for forgiveness and eternal life. And then to prove that he is the son of God, on the third day he rose again. And therefore the grave could not hold him. And that gives us the absolute assurance that we too are going to be resurrected. We too are going to be in heaven with him. And uh, that, that is why this week is really an important week for, for true believers and maybe an opportunity for us to make people think, why did, do you think God came from heaven? Why do you think he died on a cross? Why do you think he, because he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only mm -hmm. son, that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. Love it. Love it, man. Dr. Michael Youssef, honestly, man, you have been such a blessing uh, to my life and obviously tons of other uh, other people. I just uh, I thank you for being obedient to the call. Let me uh, let me say that uh, you you've been such a blessing uh, to my life again. And and obviously uh, the heathens that I have to work with, Pastor, I mean, <laughs> you, I, I'm going to give them more of your sermon. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. listen, God bless you for what you're doing. Thank you so much. Uh, really, to God be all the glory. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And for your team, I appreciate you guys helping us uh, arrange this and put this together. Uh, Dr. Michael Youssef, Leading right. the Way Ministries, the Church of the Apostles in Atlanta, Georgia. If you don't have a home church and you need a home, you live around that area, uh, that's a that would be a great place for you to go. So uh, thank you, Dr. Michael Youssef. We certainly appreciate your time. You've been very generous with your time this morning. Pleasure, Carl. Thank you for having me again. Thank you. All right, guys, uh, this is, uh, listen, it's, it, I, I, I love this week. I love, I love this week. You've heard our guest, Dr. Michael Youssef. Uh, we talked about, we, man, we went over stuff that I didn't expect to go over, and it was such a so such a blessing, guys. Please make sure you subscribe to this podcast and share this podcast wherever you go to get your podcast. Apple, Google, Spotify. We're on YouTube. We're on Rumble. You can subscribe to the uh, to our YouTube show, The Carl Jackson Show on YouTube. If some of you prefer Rumble, uh, The Carl Jackson Show on Rumble. Also, Salem Podcast Network. Uh, so you can find us there as well. I'm on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Getter, True Social, wherever I am. Uh, you can find me at The Carl Jackson Show on social media. Again, check out ltw.org, Leading the Way. Uh, uh, dot org. You can hear you can hear Dr. Michael Youssef's uh, messages. Or honestly, I just googled his name and like a thousand YouTube videos came up. <laughs> so that works. That works as well. So anyway, guys, until next time, do not grow weary doing good. God bless you. <laughs>